Hi everyone, this is a review video of the second graders of the grade expectations. So uh, here are the chapter one. Okay, so uh, my father's family name being Pirip and my Christian name Philip, my infant, my infant tongue could make of both names nothing longer or more explicit than Pip. So here, uh, the speaker is talking about his family and giving a background. So uh, he says that my fa father's family name was Pirip, and the speaker's uh, Christian name is Philip. And for infant tongue, he was too young. Our speaker was too young to pronounce this complicated name. So best thing, best he can say about his name is Pip. So I called myself Pip and came to be called Pip. So he called himself as a Pip. So this first sentence and first paragraph tells uh, quite an important thing about the background of our speaker. You no, know, usually name in case of name, you know, our parents uh, give us name. But here, he called himself Pip. So it means that he doesn't have a father or he doesn't have a parent. Okay. So um, usually the first sentence or the first first paragraph of novels uh, is quite important for any novels, whether you're whatever you're reading. So the writers they really pay much intention, they really try hard to write a great first sentence or great first paragraph. So here he calls himself a Pip, meaning that he doesn't have a parent. And I give Pirip as my father's family name on the authority of his tombstone and my sister, Mrs. Joe Gargery, who married the blacksmith. So he tells something about his, himself. So he gave himself a period as my his father's family name. He found out his father's family name is period, not directly from his father, but he found it from his father's tombstone. So it means that his father, P uh, Pip's father, passed away, and also maybe his sister, Mrs. Joe Gregory, Gargery, maybe her sister told. Pip about the father, what happened. So that's how Pip find out about the name or the family name. So Mrs. Joe Gargery is the sister of Pip and she married the blacksmith. So Pip is giving a background about himself in the beginning at the first chapter. Right? So as I never saw my father or my mother and never saw any likeness of either of them for their days were long before the days of photographs, my first fancies regarding what they were like were unreasonably derived from their tombstones. So not only Pip, Pip not only didn't see his father, but also his mother. Both his parents died when Pip was still a baby and never saw any likeness of either of them. So it means that Pip doesn't have any idea what their parents would look like because in time of these years there was no photography so he has no idea how his parents would look like and so his first fancies his first imagination his first imagination Imagination regarding what their parents look like were unreasonably derived. So he, maybe in easy terms, he get it. He get the appearance of father, mother from their tombstones. So the shape of the letters on my father's gave me an idea, you know, in the tombstone. Usually, you no. Know, here it says like numbers, and maybe the name. So these letters, my father's uh, letters on my father's, gave me an odd idea that he was a square, stout, and dark man. So you know, 
these uh, tombstones tend to be look like a square, right? Looks like a rectangle, right? So that's why all oh, my father might look like a square and stout. Stout is like short and hard. Short and hard and quite square too. And he is a dark man. So these tombstones color tend to be quite dark. So this is how he got the uh, first imagination about his father's appearance. And with curly black hair, these letters look quite curly. So, you know, my father's hair must be quite curly black hair upon looking at tombstones. How sad, isn't it? Like from the character and the turn of the inscription. So inscription, inscription is the information here. Information written in the tombstone is called a inscription. Okay. Information written in the tombstone. So the turn means you know, these letters has turns, right? So many turns and straight lines. So these turn, uh, the turn and the character, the letter itself, also George and a wife of the above. I drew a childish conclusion that my mother was freckly and sickly. So he Philip looked at the tombstone of mom. And he looked at the turns and the characters of inscription on mom's tombstone. And he come to a conclusion that mother looked like freckly and sickly. So mom look, must be quite sick, sickly. And she has some freckles. So... Freckle is something in, on your face. So my mom might have some freckles. Looking at the letter, this letter on the tombstone look like a freckle. So he has this idea that mom must have a freckle and quite sick. And to five little sto um, stone lozenges. So the lozenges, again, same thing. Lozenge is the, this stone, tombstone. Okay, lozenge is this tombstone. So we have five little stone lozenges next to uh, Pip's parents. There are five more, each about a foot and a half long, which were arranged in a neat row beside their graves. So their grave refers to my parents' grave. Pip's parents' grave next to the Pip's grave. Parents' grave, there are five little lozenges, were sacred to the memory of five little brothers of mine. So Pip had uh, five little brothers. They all died young. Right, who gave up trying to get a living exceedingly early in that universal struggle. So universal struggle means like, you know, universal refers to common. It belongs to everyone, universal struggle. So this universal struggle is an effort to live, right? The universal struggle is an effort to live. Everyone struggles. When we, when we are born, everyone struggles to live. And in case of brothers, of Pip, they gave up. They gave up this universal struggle too early, exceedingly early. Right? Exceedingly. Early. So it means that uh, Pip's little brother died so young. And I am indebted for a belief. I religiously entertained that they all been born their back with their hands in their trousers pocket. So he tried to entertain himself. You know, he lost his brothers when they were all so young. So uh, according to religion, he tried to entertain himself. And believing that their brothers all born with their hand in their trousers pocket. And they had never taken them out in the state of existence. So these brothers had never taken out the uh, hand out of their pocket. Means that they were, they didn't have time to move around their uh, hands. Meaning that they died so young. So he, is, he believed that, oh, they were born like, 
with their hands in the pocket and they just didn't have time to move around and they died so young. That's what he uh, tried to like tell himself about the brothers. So ours was the marsh country down by the river. So he, the pip, live by marsh area, marsh, the swamp area. So he lived by a swamp area and moving on to the next page. As the river wound 20 miles of the sea, so maybe there is a marsh area nearby the river and you have the river and you have the river and this river is located uh, if you go further more about 20 miles there is ocean sea 20 miles connected sea and the river okay and he lived in a, a wash, wash area swamp and my first most vivid and broad impression of the identity of things seems to me to have been gained on a memorable raw afternoon toward evening so since Pip was too young to remember anything before so one of the vivid and broad impression one of the things with one of the clear memory one of the vivid memory and one of the broad impression of anything of the identity of his surroundings about his family about his background or about himself life and his house and whereabout anything that he remembered clearly seemed to me have been gained a memorable raw afternoon toward evening so he remembered this episode happened to the afternoon moving toward the evening okay this was a uh, just the afternoon moving toward the evening and at such a time i found out for certain that this bleak place overgrown grown with nettles was the churchyard so one day he remembered it was the evening and <clears throat> in a bleak place in a dark place he remember a dark place overgrown with nettles <clears throat> nettles is the plant right and overgrown nettles really huge nettles so he remember that there was a nettles plant and it was a churchyard so he remembered that he was in a churchyard it was a church And that Philip Philip laid of this parish. So parish here. Parish is also a church. And Philip Philip is a father, right? Father. So he died. Died and buried. He died and buried in this church. And also Georgia and a wife of the above the above. So above means, you know, Pili Pili father, father's wife, Georgiana, so it's name, um, mom, the Pip, mom also dead and buried in this church. And that Alexander, Bartholomew, Abraham, Tobias, and Roger, infant children of aforesaid, aforesaid means above mentioned, right? Above mentioned meaning the father and mother so father and mother's five children infant children were also dead and buried in the church and that the dark flat wilderness beyond the churchyard intersected with dikes and mounds and gate so there is this wilderness this wild nature huge nature beyond the church and they are Intersected. Inter intersect means they crossed. 
or they meet each other. So this huge area meet with each other uh, with dikes. Dikes. Do you remember the meaning of the dikes? Dikes is this this whole area in marsh, right? Marshes has a lot of holes, you know. Marshes has a lot of holes, really rough area. Marsh, and this is a dike. And mound. Mound is the opposite of dike, right? So you have little bump. This little bump. This bumpy area. So this is a mound, right? So you have mound and you have a gate. So I guess the church has a gate. Far beyond. There's a gate. They, these gates, mounds, and dikes, they intersect with it. They meet each other and with scattered cattle feeding on it. So cattle like horses or cows, right? Horse and cows, animals. They are scattered in this area and eating the plant. So since this is a marsh area you know there are more animals or more wild things rather than people you know in this area and was the marshes so he he was standing on the marsh area he realized that he was standing in the church marsh area that the low leaden line beyond and beyond of this marsh area there's this, this uh low area low leaden area so low leading area beyond was the river. River was flowing low far. Okay. And at a distant savage layer from which the wind was rushing. So from this distant from this distant place the wind was blowing. Wind was blowing. Wind, not just a wind, not just a mild and breeze wind, it was savage, distant savage, really harsh. Harsh land, harsh wind was blowing toward a uh, pip, and that place was the sea. So from the sea, a harsh wind was blowing. And that the small bundle of the shivering, growing afraid of it all, beginning to cry was sh uh, was Pip. So there was this small bundle. Small bundle. Bundle is like stuff like this bundle. But Pip himself called himself as a bundle because he was a little small and I guess he was hunching in front of uh in front of the tombstone. And <laughs> He was crying. Crying. And there was Pip by himself. Suddenly, hold your nose, cried the terrible voice, as a man started up from among the grave at the side of the church porch. So... Let's say let's say this is church building, okay, and you have gate here, so in here this is like a roof covering the doorstep of the gate, and this roof is called as a porch. So P was crying, hunching in front of the tomb. Suddenly, a man, a stranger, came out from the porch of the church. Church, and he said, "Hold your nose, stop crying." As a man started up from among the grave at the side of the church porch, so he appeared 
from the church of the uh, porch of the church, and he said, "Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut your throat." And he started threatening Pip. So don't stop, stop moving, stop crying. Otherwise, I'll cut your throat. And he calls Pip as a little devil. This terrible person calls Pip as a little devil. A fearful man, all in a coarse gray, with a great iron on his leg. So this man looked quite scary. And he was in wearing a coarse gray. He was wearing a rough, rough gray color. And he had a le uh, iron, a great iron on his leg. So, the stranger. And he had an iron. Iron in his leg. Means he's a prison. He escaped from prison. Man with no hat and with broken shoes. So his shoes are all broken. He didn't wear any wet a uh, hat and with an old rag tied around his head. So he had a uh, old rag instead of a hat. He had some kind of rag tied around his head. Man who had been soaked in water. So he is wet, soaked in water and smothered in the mud. So he has got a lot of stain. He's stained in the mud, a lot of stain in his body all over, and lamed by stones. And he also got hurt. He got hurt by the stones and cut by flint. So flint is the plant. And nettles, similar, stung by nettles. So in since this is a marsh area, it has a plant, a lot of plant, which is quite wild. Some of them has like some thorns with it, so you can get stung and you can cut by this plant, and flint and nettles and torn by briars. Same thing. Plant, wild flowers, wild plants live in the marsh area. And who limped and shivered. So he was limping, right? Maybe one of his leg got hurt. So he was limping and, you know, it was night. And the wind, the strong wind was blowing. So he was shivering. It was cold. So he was shivered and glared and growled. So glare means angry. And he was growled. So growl means like making an angry sound, right? So he was grow making an angry sound and he was he looked really angry and scary and whose teeth chattered in his head as he seized me by the chin. His teeth chattered. He moved chatter means move fast. What happens when you are cold? In in the winter you get outside in the night, you get so cold and your teeth starting chattering. So that's what this man was doing and he sees me by the chin. So he hold Pip. He hold Pip in the air. Right? And like he uh, raised him above the chin level. Of himself okay and oh don't cut my throat sir I pleaded in terror so Pip was scared so he said don't cut my throat sir and pray don't do it sir so pray means please don't do it and the man says tell us your name say the man quick what quick what's your name tell me what is your name so a man a stranger suddenly appears and start to threaten quick uh, Pip. Okay. So I guess this is the how far we covered last time, and this is the end, the exam unit. So uh, again, uh, I hope it helps your studying.
Okay, so guys, thank you for participation, part participation, and um, I hope to uh, see you at school again. Okay, so bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Good job. Thank you.